So look, thank you, Charlotte, for joining us today. Uh, look, we usually start our episodes by asking our guests how they started their journey into the early learning education and care sector. So look, I'm going to hand it over to you and ask you how, how did that happen for you? And it, I'd love to you to share that story with our listeners. So I do have kind of an unconventional journey into the early childhood and childcare space. Um, so I'll go from the start. So it's, it's a little bit of a story, but we'll go there. Um, I studied That's good. I studied marine biology and zoology uh, at uni. Um, and so most of my tertiary education was really in that scientific field, which is maybe different for your for your listeners for this episode. <laughs> um, so when I originally graduated in 2013, I I volunteered at uni for a while. I actually started my master's degree. Um, I didn't get too far into it because I decided quite early on that a fully fledged academia pathway wasn't for me. So I took a little bit of time to kind of work and travel. And then I ended up coming home and making the decision to pursue a postgraduate diploma in education. So I kind of because of my marine science background, I enrolled to do secondary teaching. So I graduated with the ability to teach science and mathematics to years seven to 12 students, which was really good. Um, and I started teaching in, I think my teaching career started in 2017 towards the second half. Um, and I've taught in a lot of different schools in and around Perth. Um, I've, I've kind of seen the breadth of government schools, independent schools, um, kind of private um, ones as well. So it's a real, really diverse range of educational and teaching experiences for me. So I've had, I've been able to collect a lot of, um, a lot of memories and experiences through that. Um, and I'm still kind of a relief teacher. I do tutoring as well, but I don't work full time anymore. So, um, but I mean, leading into what I'll talk about, I think the teaching profession for me really gave me so many tangible skills that I use professionally and personally as well. So I think it definitely helped me with my recent business venture, which we'll talk about and really expanding into the early childhood and childcare space as well. Um, I think it just taught me really yeah. crucial interpersonal skills. I think going through, I just, I learned how to talk to people of all ages and um, parents and children and admin yeah. other staff. I think that was definitely a really big takeaway that's helped me so far. And then I know kind of high schools, uh, dealing with teenagers, teaching them, um, it kind of tore down but then rebuilt my confidence. I know that sounds dramatic, but I think it was a really crucial um, moment for me because these teenagers, and I know younger children as well, have a multitude of different experiences, different backgrounds, abilities, um, so I think those classrooms really gave me um, a really good kind of jumping off point, I guess, to um, make sure that I remember that everyone has the opportunity to learn. Education is a real privilege. Um, and the fact that we can expose children to knowledge that could possibly pique their interest, I think that's really important. So um, for me, even though I was teaching for a long time, what piqued my interest was marine science and that kind of came back to um, me studying that uh, at uni for the first time. So uh, I think I definitely learned a lot from that profession, but I really wanted to merge the passion I had for marine science with education as well. So after kind of having that idea first when I graduated uni in marine science, um, I finished up full-time work at the end of 2022 and ended up launching my business, which is Ocean Discovery Education, uh, in September 2023. Um, so it's still a new venture. It's been a slow burn, but I think it's gaining momentum, which is exciting. And um, in terms of the kind of early childhood and childcare sectors, this business has really allowed me to um, I think we've hit, I've hit the milestone of 50 different classrooms, so um, different incursions going through, so 50 different classrooms. Wow. And I think about, I think my numbers were about 1,200 children already just um, being able to teach them about the ocean, 
its inhabitants and what we can do to protect it. Um, and my real hope, I think, for for my early childhood sessions. That's fantastic. It, thank you. Yeah, it's it's been um, it's been uh, a busy almost year now, but um, it's it's nice to see the numbers, yeah. a little bit, especially with my science background. It's good to see them. I was just going to ask you. You were doing secondary. What made you go? I would like to start a business and teach younger children in the early learning years about marine science. What was the connection that you got from all of that to say, I think I need to start here? I think with my background in kind of science, maths and secondary education, I saw where a lot of these students ended up before they were going to graduate. So a lot of them, you can kind of catch them at about year seven and you can um, teach and expose them to lots of different things and they can kind of pick and choose what piques their interest. But I think in terms of primary and then going even younger into early childhood, I think my hope for it and is kind of making sure that all young children really can understand or be exposed to those interesting aspects of the ocean. So if they know about it when they're really young, I really hope that they'll continue that kind of understanding, respect and appreciation through um, the rest of their childhood and then into adulthood as well, because um, the ocean is a central part of not only how the planet works, but for our life on the planet. So I think it's a really important, um, for me, I hope, um, it's a really important way to kind of educate and talk to these kids when they're really young. Um, so they grow up thinking um, that this is an important place. It's a really important environment and it's uh, really vital for us to look after that environment as well. Wow, that is that is fantastic because that's, um, that's such a, a passion of yours to be able to impart that onto those younger children. And we all know little kids like love anything where it's something about the ocean and fear. like it's just one of those things isn't it that I don't think there'd be many kids that wouldn't enjoy a session with you Charlotte oh I hope not <laughs> I've had some nice yeah. um some nice yeah. feedback from it so I think it's it's been a good start yeah so what I thought I'd do is like I met Charlotte at um ECLD in Perth last uh, earlier this year and invited her to join us for this podcast because I saw the interest and the passion that Charlotte had um, and and what you did and all the wonderful things you showed us at that conference. So what I thought I'd like to do is talk about marine incursions. What does that mean? What is it? And what are the shellfish doing? Yeah, <laughs> so I think with these ones, the what we say with marine incursions, I know incursions can be a funny word, um, but essentially, what I provide, it's it's a mobile service, so really opposite to an excursion. So kids and students and teachers and educators don't have to come out to me. I'll go to them um, and I bring the wonders of the ocean directly to that classroom or childcare centre. Um, and then depending on the age of the children, I run an informative math session um, and then the children and educators as well, lots of adults love it too, um, is that they can go through and explore yeah. a rain, a, an ocean display essentially that I bring. So I've got some live marine animals. I've got um, whale bones, shark jaws. Ooh, are you going to show us some today? I've got a couple of different things here, so I'm happy to pull them up now. So I've got some of, I'll give you some of these ones. I'm sorry, this isn't great for podcasts, but for those watching, um, I've got some coral specimens, no, no, like these ones here. So lots of kind of touch and feel. Um, you can see all the different textures. So I've got some corals. We've got lots of different shells. So these ones are great as well. Um, wow. What else have I got yeah, here? Beautiful. Some urchins, these ones are great to have a little look at the different patterns. Um, so these ones here work really nicely as well. Um, so yeah, lots of different things um, that I can bring along. Um, and I've, like I said before, I've got programs that range from toddlers um, all the way through to year 12 students. So I can go into classrooms, childcare centers, OSH clubs, school holiday programs, different events as well. So it's been, yeah, it's been exciting, but it's definitely something that's a bit of a gap in 
uh, WA uh, based ed- or marine based education here in WA. So it's something I'm excited to to hopefully expand and fill that gap. Places in WA. Mm, yeah, I know. <laughs> and your places in WA are so special, aren't they? Oh my god, like really lovely places. So when you're doing your marine incursion and you've got um, the shells and things, did you just mention earlier about um, like fish as well? Did you say fish and things like that you bring along? Well, it's quite tricky to bring in fish because um, you need a really big tank set up. So I've got a tank, um, but I don't bring it with me. So I usually take the animals out. So I bring some, I've got some hermit crabs, I've got some sea stars, I've got, at the moment, I think I've got some sea cucumbers and brittle stars as well. So lots of them, they're different textures, different sizes. Um, the brittle stars kind of have arms that move around. So the kids love it because they're a bit ticklish. And um, so it's usually that kind of breadth of <laughs> um, life that I bring in, but it's always really fun to see the kids' reactions. Yeah. And look, it's things that, you know, people think, I suppose, with marine, oh, you can only bring a shell in or you can only do this. But in fact, you're bringing a range of things in that often we see in the ocean, but don't actually know what we're looking at, especially like sea cucumbers and and the uh, the sea stars. So how do we, you know, so it's great to hear that they're, um, that you're being able to show those. What do you notice the impact on children from doing the marine incursion? So I think with this one, because I I bring in all of these things, I bring in snorkeling gear as well for them to try on. I think usually the way the sessions work, that informative mat session, depending on the age of the kids, if it's kind of kindy and above, we can do a little mat session. And then the younger ones, it's um, quite quick. Um, but we use, we I kind of find that the impact is almost immediate like the kids come in and they see what's displayed they'll come and sit down in front of me and i think i did an incursion at the start of the week and i had i did four kindy classes and they were just silent enamored for 20 minutes while i talked about different ocean animals so um i think there's a real interest there and i think even just with them walking in and seeing what i've bought it's almost an instant engagement which for lots of teachers and educators, it's really hard to do. Um, but I think because it's something that's and, different. And especially having children quiet. Absolutely. Yeah. And a group of children quiet is even crazier. So um, I definitely don't take that for granted, but I can capitalise on it for a little bit, talk about some different ocean animals, and I use kind of plush toys, really colourful visual aids, so um, I can keep them engaged and attentive. But a lot of the time they're just sponges. You can almost see new pathways in their brain being made, just soaking up all these facts and trying to link their experience or what they're and with what they're listening to. So I think it's um, it's for that part of it, it's really engaging and um, exciting to see that. Um, but then I'm also quite kind of happy yeah. and proud that I can amalgamate not only that information based learning but then back it up with some practical hands-on elements as well so then when I finish talking they can come up and explore so they either come and see me and hold those marine uh, creatures which is always really exciting for them Um, and then they can just go exploring so they can try on um, snorkels and fins and they can go and pick their favorite shell they can feel the sharpness of shark teeth and they these things that are tangible that they can interact with um, it's something that I, I t- kind of take pride in because we know how important that is for early childhood sectors, something that's play-based yes. or interaction-based. Yes. Um, so it's something that I'm quite proud that I can deliver. Wow. Now, look, it's so exciting, isn't it? Because, you know, this, this is something that children do love. We all know children love the ocean and learning from it. And you're doing, you're doing it in their place where they go every day and they can enjoy it and the snorkeling what a great idea so many children don't understand what snorkeling is um because they don't get that opportunity to go to the beach or go snorkeling so to actually share that and, and make them you know not afraid of those things is just fabulous um do you notice an impact on the team at the service as well do you see or hear much feedback at the time or afterwards um on what they've noticed or their their um, version of it? 
Yeah, it's also really interesting to talk to the team and the educators that are in that centre or classroom because I think first off, they're kind of relieved sometimes that it is an incursion. They don't have to take kids out. They don't need permission slips or buses or anything like that. So I think that's always the first reaction. It's like, oh, yeah, someone's coming in and setting everything up for us. So I think that's always really good. Um, And then I think the educators and teachers that I see, they get excited with the kids, which I think is really infectious because I start bringing my trolleys in or I start to set up and I always get excited comments from the educators too. Um, And then when the session starts, I think there's usually two reactions. So you get either educators where they don't know much about the ocean, so they're excited and learning with the kids as well, Um, or they know a lot about the ocean and they just relish the opportunity to see lots of these things that are (laughs) underwater. So lots of these kids and adults actually don't get to see um, a lot of the artefacts and specimens I bring in because it's quite hard to find sometimes like the marine environment's a tricky one. It's powerful, but it can be difficult to access. So if you're not snorkeling or diving or going to the beach all the time, you might not see a shark egg or find a shark tooth or see these kind of diverse range of shells um, that I bring along. So I think they always kind of get really excited. So I think it's equally special to see the kids really happy and enthusiastic, but it's also um, pretty special to see the educators in the same boat as well. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And look, and obviously, you know, we're talking about reactions and things like that. Um, what's the best or the funniest reaction um, from a from one of the kids? Are you able to share something like that with us? Oh, yeah, there's so many. They're really great. Um, some kids will just go, oh, this is better than the aquarium. So instead of going to the aquarium, they're like, oh, this is way better. And so they get all excited and I know it's in the moment, but that one's really cute. Um, and then some kids just yeah, get. Yeah, that is so cute. It's so cute. And then some kids, are, you know, I, I've got one of my friend's kids um, loves dinosaurs since he was little. So the last few years that's been his obsession. So some of these kids that come in, they're, their obsession is the ocean or their obsession is um, sharks or dolphins or they love corals. Like lots of kids have these fixations. And so sometimes when those kids come in and they'll talk to me and they'll just tell me everything that they know and they're just so excited that someone is there just to listen to their every every piece of information they've ever learned, which I love as well. So that those ones are always really exciting. Oh. And then, um, yeah, there's so many more, but they're the few that come to mind. Oh, that's that's actually lovely to hear, isn't it? That you've, you know, those kids that are able to share with someone who's also excited about what their passion is. Um, yeah, I and, think and, so. And, and just someone to encourage that a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we have a lot more marine biologists and marine scientists budding since, uh, coming along since your um, incursions have started. <laughs> and encouraging others to have that respect of the sea as well. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, now, look, yeah. Look, is there anything else you'd love to share with us that you're thinking, I, I would really love to let everyone know about the impact of this or um, where you see this being a real, really, really big um, part of an education or a curriculum, something along those lines? Is there something else you'd like to share with us? Well, yeah, I think from, I know I'm kind of based in Perth, I'm a WA um, business, but all of the programs are kind of aligned to the science curriculum. And I know um, that's more prevalent for primary and secondary settings, but I think even in early childhood, um, that's really important. You've got a lot of sustainability markers um, that uh, this work ties into as well. Um, And I know along the East Coast, um, there's similar companies that do the same thing. So I know of some in Southeast Queensland, uh, through Victoria, New South Wales as well. So I know whilst I'm based in WA, there's definitely people out there that have uh, similar goals to me and that can offer this service too. So I think overall, it's just really important. I mean, I know there's so many things to care about at the moment, isn't there? There's so many different things people can invest time and effort and education in. But um, as I said at the start, 
the I'm obviously biased, but the ocean is really the base of all life on earth. It's going to, it helps regulate our climate. It provides resources for us and it's a really important diverse environment. So I think everyone can take part in the education and outreach for this. Um, and I know I'm only one little part of it, um, but I think for me, I'm super passionate about it. It brings my love for marine science and education together. But I think every single person, whether you're an educated teacher, parent, just a citizen, everyone can do something to look after the environment and, and play their part. So I think for me and for these marine incursions that I, um, I go out and talk to kids um, and educate, I think everyone can do their little bit as well. So um, I know mine's definitely a spotlight on it, but everyone can play their part too. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And also I see your passion and I think it's fabulous that you can impart that through incursions, small groups of children and encourage that respect about our environment and, you know, and learning more, learning more. Every, every generation there is that can learn more about this is fantastic. Um, now, can I ask you, what we ask our guests is looking forward, what do you think are the big challenges facing the sector in the next few years? So I think for me, I know I've kind of created a unique niche for myself um, in the fact that I'm not directly a part of schools or childcare centres, but I do rely on them obviously for business. So if I split the answer into two, I think what you've maybe talked about with other guests on here before is from schools and centres, the main challenges are really staffing, budgets, increased demand from curriculum, which obviously reduces time. So I think that's definitely um, kind of three major ones from the sector in general. But because I don't have um, direct, it doesn't, imp well, it doesn't directly impact me because I'm not teaching anymore. I think from a personal kind of business perspective as well, um, those ones will impact me um, going through. But I think for the future, some challenges I can predict for an incursion business uh, like the one I run uh, is mostly just getting my name out there. I know that sounds quite fundamental, but um, yeah. as a new kind of niche venture, I think it's it takes time to curate a reputation, to increase bookings, to get people to rebook with me as well. Um, and because I'm a team of one, I think my main challenge is going to lie there in the next few years. Um, and I think that bleeds into a lot of different things. So we know life's just expensive. So making sure it's a balance of being kind of profitable, yeah. but also living life, that's um, it's quite basic there, but I think that's the main one. Um, and like I said before, there's just lots of things to care about in this world. So really making um, making sure people are aware of the ocean and the, the impact that it has on our day-to-day -day lives. Um, I think that's an ongoing challenge. Why would they pick an, an ocean incursion over something else? So um, that's definitely something I'm working through as well. Um, and then just some little technical things like <coughs> the education kind of curriculum that changes all the time so making sure i can adapt and update um where that's needed so it stays relevant and um and kind of adheres to those educational requirements because that's something i pride myself on to make sure that it's as little work for teachers as possible they can um, put that straight into the incursion forms one of the things you just hit the nail on the head there was actually about the teachers or the um, educators in services or schools, how doing this can actually be a time saver and another part of the meeting the quality framework or curriculum that can support the educators and teachers without taking someone from their centre or, or, or putting more pressures on them to do this when they can bring someone like you in Charlotte. Do you, do you think that's a, that's certainly something that they could consider? I think so. I think that's definitely, um, 
it's definitely tapping into the potential of experts all around us. So teachers and educators, whether they're in early childhood through to secondary, you're almost always time poor. There's always things for you to do. There's always more for you to give. And that's always what it feels like in education. But every teacher wants the best for their students, whether um, they're little ones or the older ones as well. So I think whilst it's still a business that I am running and obviously it needs to maintain profitability. It's still something that is tapping into, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, tapping into the expertise that I've curated over my life. And you can do that with so many other aspects as well. So I think these incursions, um, I know paperwork and hoops to jump through do make it difficult, but I do think it's something that is so important because it can help educators and teachers out um, and really tap into that the potential of so many experts um, that surround the education field, but that might not be directly uh, in it anymore. So I do think that's a really important one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. And look, um, and if if our listeners today go, "Wow, this is wonderful," but I'm based on the east coast or wherever they are. Um, and they just want some more information that you're happy to talk to them anyway, aren't you, Charlotte? We can, we can share your details through the podcast and, um, and our listeners can reach out to you as they, as they need. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. I'm more than happy to talk about, um, some uh, colleagues that are doing similar, uh, things over the East coast as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. The other thing I was going to ask you, do you um, do you do like a, a Zoom one or a, a one on a screen where you share your knowledge? Is that something you've been doing at all or not yet? Not yet. It's something that um, I would love to kind of kickstart and see how that goes. But I think in terms of science education, it's very tricky um, to do things remotely, especially when the big draw card um, for me is a lot of the touch and feel and the animals as well. But um, it's something that is is definitely on the horizon. I would love to look into it. Um, I do run a marine science uh, semester long course with Scotch Global, but that's only for years sixes to 12 or tens at the moment. So it's definitely on the, right. the upper end through high school, but I'll see how I go with some early childhood ideas. I've got lots of things um, yeah. bouncing around so actually, in my head, so we'll see. That's a, and so you run a course as well, so a semester long course for students or teachers? This one's for students. So I collaborated with Scotch Global and created an 18 week long marine science course. So it covers everything from marine biology to oceanography to human impacts and conservation. So it's a big kind of holistic deep dive into what it could be like to be a marine scientist. So students um, remotely can hop on and it's from year six is, I think six to 10 um, at the moment, just to, if there's anyone yeah. um, that has an interest yeah, in marine yeah. science or potentially wants to study it in school or afterwards it's a really good um a really good beginners course now before we do finish up what i love to ask is um do you have a special motto or wise words that inspires you every day um, that you might like to share with us well i don't think i could be a scientist or in the field of biology without referencing David Attenborough on here. So I had to pick one of his. Um, <laughs> and I think I have to, it just, it's a requirement. <laughs> um, so I think that's it. I think the quote that always sticks with me that I always go back to is that no one will protect what they don't care about and no one will care about what they've never experienced. And so I think in terms of, ocean wow, discovery education and science as well. I think it's so powerful yeah. and I think it really brings back the kind of the onus on not only the individual, but the community as well. So it's something that I really take to heart. And I just think that from early childhood, even through to adulthood, everyone's a lifelong learner and you can continue being curious and continue interacting with the natural world because I think, especially for the ocean, it's powerful, it's fascinating, it's amazing. And I think that particular quote 
um, always comes back to me when I'm uh, delivering my marine incursions as well. Oh, that, that is fantastic. Charlotte, that's a beautiful um, reference from David Attenborough. And actually, I think I've heard it on one of his shows, but I do um, connect with that now. And also, we could even take it further and think about, you know, you care about education and children, and that's what you're doing. You're, you're sharing your passion with them about not only caring about the ocean, but caring about their education as well. That sounds lovely. Thank you. <laughs> No, thank you. I appreciate your time today. And um, and I know we'll keep in touch and I'll see you again when I'm back in Perth. That's it. Thank you so much for having me on, Paula. It's been lovely to talk to you. Yeah, same here. Thank you. And we'll be in touch shortly.